I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about a major factor if your breakup can turn around. Yes. This is a really good video and so you better listen up because oftentimes you guys hear these basic reasons for breakups. Today we're going to get deep. Yeah. Right? Today we're going to really look at some deep reasons why breakups happen and I just did an email coaching on this that I shared with you a little while ago yes that talks about this stuff but you would be surprised that there are a lot of other factors to breakups besides you and your ex right and I keep trying to say that in whatever bumbling way I have managed to say it and I think we did talk about hidden factors in breakups one time and this is kind of a continuation of that idea and I want to talk about a particular family therapist who was quite famous and his name was Dr. He was a psychiatrist he was Dr. Murray Bowen B-O-W-E-N a nice simple name and he wrote some material that I have found extremely helpful in my travels through mental health now, family therapy was all the rage in the 1980s, and mental health and treatment and so forth and so on is like anything else. It has fads. And family therapy was a very useful fad and was very much in fashion for about 10 years. And then when we found out that it didn't fix every problem in the world, we did what we always do, which is move on to the next fad having thrown the baby out with the bathwater oftentimes. So I suggest that we continue to use family systems thinking in the way that we look at cases and people and situations. And many, People are thinking, family systems? What does that what's mean? What's a family system? Well, okay. you'd be surprised. Right. Some of the initial thinking on family systems compared families to an amoeba. I know that sounds crazy. In the sense that, if you know what an amoeba is, it's a little it's not a single cell thing I don't think but it's a tiny little piece of protoplasm a living thing that's a teeny little thing and it's made kind of I don't even know what you'd say out of a gelatin like cells like, like, yeah like but it's kind of like gelatin yeah the deal is if you poke it in the front it gets a reaction throughout the amoeba so people began to think of families as a living organic thing and if something's going on in one part of the system say with the parents the repercussions the ripples in this liquid are going to go throughout the family system mm -hmm. does that make sense Greg? it makes sense to me but okay. a lot of people are thinking what does this have to do with my breakup Margaret what is this crazy woman talking <laughs> about and how does it have to do with my breakup bear with me a little bit and you will see um, I managed to hear this gentleman speak um, three times, I think, before he passed. He was born in Tennessee in like 1913, trained as a psychiatrist, was in World War II. Um, and he died in the 1990s, because I guess he smoked every day of his life. Um, but I did get to hear him. The last time I heard him, the poor man was quite ill, I think, from lung cancer, and it was very difficult to understand him between his his coughing and his heavy-duty Tennessee accent. Mm. But it was worth listening because I think the man was brilliant. Okay? So what does he teach, Margaret? What, what he teaches is that families are really almost like a living organic thing. Mm -hmm. And that there are certain rules that you can figure out if you observe them closely enough. And sometimes you can predict and intervene in what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why I ask you to bear with me until I get through this. It's worth it. Okay. He said that the basic 
relationship unit in a family is not one-on-one, -on -one, but rather a triangle, original, uh, originating from mother, father, child. Exactly. And the, the minute you have mother, father, child, you have a, a triangle and the beginning of a family. His most famous book is called The Differentiation of Self in One's Family of Origin. In other words, it's the old question that we've talked about before. How can you be part of a family and still maintain your own individuality and independence? And his family, just to make things more confusing, collectively owned a department store. So not only were they sort of stuck together and fused as a family, but they were also kind of a stuck and fused together at work, mm -hmm. which made separating from that family an extremely difficult process. But he spent many years analyzing his family and trying to figure out how to become a completely differentiated person. And that means two things. If you're not differentiated, your brain and your emotions are kind of all fused together. And all you see is emotion. And the decisions you make are totally derived on how you feel. <clears throat> As, what does that mean? It means that as you move up the scale toward being more differentiated, you can be more rational. But if you're at a lower level of differentiation, you're going to make a short-term decision based on how you feel that minute. We had a lovely dinner, let's get married. Okay? That would be a very impulsive decision. So that's how people make impulsive decisions when they're working totally off of emotion and they're not able to stand back and look at this issue intellectually and say the pros and cons. If you're going to respond emotionally, you're not going to do a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the higher up the differentiation scale you are, the more likely you are to be able to do a cost-benefit analysis that's going to help you. Okay? Um, <clears throat> It's roughly equivalent to emotional maturity. If I'm gonna say you're differentiated from your family, we're gonna talk about somebody who's emotionally secure and who can make their own decisions, okay? And I'm sure I have said many times before, the real mark of an adult is can this person make reasonable decisions for their own life? So what Margaret is trying to say <laughs> here is that when you're looking at your partner, and you're looking at your ex, you're trying to figure out how individuated they are from their family. So if your partner was still living with their parents, you have to understand that they didn't have as much to this decision as you think. In other words, their parents probably had some kind of role in the breakup. Not always. Not always, but often. Often. And that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And when I ask people, now tell me about your partner. Um, how does she do, I remember asking a gentleman one time, how does your partner do with making decisions? He said, oh, terrible. She has to ask me what to order for dinner. And I thought, oh, I'm so sorry, because your chances of getting this woman back are not good. Um, if her family is openly saying to you, we, we could skip you, we'd like it fine if you move to the next state. Um, she's not going to be able to make a decision to be with you against their advice and their will. And the other thing is, is that even if you are, they're not living with their parents, they could live on the other side of the country. Absolutely. And the parents could still be making their decisions. That's right. And the way it's it's absolutely put is you can live next door to your family and be totally differentiated, individuated, whichever word you prefer. Um, or you, they can live in California and you live in on the East Coast somewhere and you can still be fused because they're making the decisions. He talks about families as having, this is how bad the terminology gets, stuck togetherness that all families are to some extent fused. And as families and individuals grow, they are better able to separate emotion from logic 
and to make better decisions. He calls a dysfunctional family an undifferentiated ego mass. It's almost like they're one person. These are the families that you see all together in the waiting room at the doctor's office. Okay, everyone in the family comes. You've got grandma, the children, everybody. Um, you see these families in the grocery store, God help us. Okay, with, I, I remember just recently seeing a family with like three kids hanging off the basket and several others trailing behind. Mm -hmm. Now that can be a babysitting problem, but just looking at them, I thought, I bet they go everywhere this way. Mm -hmm. Now this is a family that has not had much opportunity to begin to differentiate, okay? Oftentimes these people end up quite poor because their symptoms keep them poor. Um, and it can become a really nasty cycle where poverty complicates life and the fact that they're undifferentiated complicates life. And I'll tell you just quickly about a case I dealt with one time where the mother was so obese she could not leave the house, okay? And she had other physical problems uh, associated with that. The father would go to work, to his job, but he'd be there for a couple of hours and then one of the mother's physical difficulties would kick in. And when that happened, he would have to come home to be sure if she was okay. The presenting problem for the family and the way we got involved was that the little girl had enuresis and encapresis. Okay. Means they wet themselves and they went yeah. to the bathroom on themselves. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and the school had expelled her because they could no longer deal with her. And it became very evident to me very quickly that this family simply wanted to stay together in the house all day and we're finding different ways not to have to separate from each other even for a few hours, mm -hmm. okay? And so how does this relate to your ex? Well, if you are trying to maybe push the relationship to another level right. and change the dynamic, the parents, the family, the grandparents, the siblings, whatever, might do something to sabotage things. In fact, inevitably will do something to sabotage things unless they're all very well differentiated. And remember what that looks like. It looks like people who are mature adults and can make their own decisions. Yep. Okay? And that's my first attempt at the theory. And so you got to understand, you and your ex may have had a great relationship, and the family may have looked like they loved you, they adored you, you were so great to their daughter, or their son, or whatever. And then, next thing you know, they're saying different things like, oh, you know, behind your back. That's right. You know? That's right. Sabotaging things. And it's not that they really want to make everybody's life miserable, but the family amoeba, you know, the whole family system together, resists losing anybody. Mm -hmm. And they can love you when you're dropping by to have tea with them. But if exactly. you're going to take their... Exactly. Yeah. If, they, if you're going to take their son or daughter away to another state, another place, and establish an independent life, very predictably they're going to say, oh, that's not a good idea. And they'll give you a hundred different reasons why and what will happen to the family if you go. I could tell you... Um I had a situation that this happened recently. Yep. Um, a guy was dating this girl. She, she had a, a, a daughter. Mm -hmm. And she had a twin. Mm -hmm. The twins lived with the parents. Okay? So the guy's girlfriend and the twin lived with the parents. So the grandparents were there all in this family. And the uh, partner of the twin also lived there. Okay? okay, so everybody's living in this family, and the, the girl is saying, I don't want you to, uh, I don't want to move out with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take you and my daughter out with you. I want to have you move in with us. Oh. And he said, no, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And when he tried to get her to move out with him, she wouldn't do it. Right. 
right? And so that's why she broke up with him. And he's looking at all these different reasons. And as I put it together, I'm like, oh, no. That's right. I got it. I got this one. The parents interfered. They, they didn't want her to leave because that would have changed the whole dynamic That's right. of the family. And she may have taken the children eventually. The daughter was going to be leaving. Right. The, the child was going to be leaving. And so now the whole family system is messed up. And how did they threaten her not to go? I don't know how they threatened her. Um, I don't think he had enough information as to what they were saying. Okay. But it was enough where she, she told him, well, my parents helped me. I don't want to leave them because I, I, I believe in family and I believe that they're going to help me. And if I go with you, I don't have the help so much with her child. See, she wasn't ready to leave that she family. She wasn't ready to make that very difficult decision to say, I'll miss you, but this is what I have to do for my life. Had he been willing to go, yeah, he could have wound up living with her. Of course, not in a healthy situation. Not in a healthy situation. But there wouldn't have been a breakup. Had things stayed status quo and he didn't try and change the system, it would have still been together. But unhappily, because he wasn't happy. There the way would have were. been problems. And it sounded like he had a real urge to be on his own and differentiated. And she was struggling to kind of meet him where he was. But she was certainly not getting any help from her family system. No. And that's what you need to understand. When sometimes breakups look like there's no reason. This is happening all of a sudden. The first thing people think of is there's somebody else. When it's more likely something that's going on in the family. Yeah. When we talked that out, it was such an aha moment for both of us as we pieced it together. Yeah. He, he felt so much better. I bet he did. He was <laughs> like, now it makes sense. Yep. And he hadn't done anything wrong. No. No. He, he was hadn't. trying to do the healthy thing. Right. But, you know, he didn't want to be in a situation where he was living with the, the parents. Right. And the, and the sibling and the everything. He didn't want that. And you can only imagine the craziness that would have gone on about decision making. About the kids' social life and their education and all this kind of thing. There would have been many... Many chiefs and not a lot of Indians. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that will blow you away when you're doing a Skype with Margaret. Because she has so much experience with this. This is the kind of stuff she's looking for. That it's just incredible when I watch her do this and we piece things together yeah. over the years. It's so enlightening. And it's freeing because you realize that you really weren't the problem. Even though he felt That's like exactly he was. That's exactly right. Of course he thought he was the problem. Most people blame themselves for a breakup anyway. But I don't think it's obvious lots of times when a surprise breakup does come from something in the family. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you. No. They're going to act like they still love you and they're confused. That's right. Yeah. And they're confused. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. But when your partner can't give you a reason and doesn't really seem to know... That's one of the places to look. Absolutely. All right. A lot to think about, and we're going to do another video on it. Yep. So you're going to really enjoy the next one, too. Uh, of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching, and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Feel free to sign up with me. I would love to talk with you. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.